What's going on guys, we're back. Had to take a little break because school got kind of crazy, but today we're gonna be reacting to Faith Hill and Tim McGraw's $35 million private island. You guys know the drill, so let's jump into the video right now. Hi guys, I'm Ray Parisi with CNBC and we are down in the Exumas. We're here to check out the $35 million private island home of Faith Hill and Tim McGraw. Their island is about 20 acres. It's got a 6,500 square foot main house and around 1.3 miles of pristine waterfront. Obviously $35 million is no small expense, but you are getting a lot out of it. I mean, you're getting an entire island, which is just crazy. And guess what? If you have an island, that means you don't have to deal with anyone. So for that alone, the price is well worth it. Power Couples Island is located in the Exumas. That's a chain of about 365 gorgeous Bahamian islands. You can get here by boat, but it's way cooler to come by seaplane. Either way, the arrival's absolutely spectacular. So obviously, buying an island is not going to be cheap. $35 million is a lot. But there's something about the exclusivity of it that makes it so appealing. I mean, if you think about it, there's this transitional moment and experience where you're living your everyday normal life like everyone else. But then it's almost this flip of a switch to where you're getting onto your seaplane to go to your private island. Like, there's just something about that experiential quality that is a big driving force for why I think people might get this. And it's relevant because we can see this in architecture. Now, it may not be this extreme, but experience is a huge part of how we interact with architecture. Back in 2003, when the famous couple bought the island, it was virtually undeveloped. It took them about nine years to give it a major makeover. So stay with me here for a second. I want you to keep in mind that he said it was undeveloped previously. You're looking at the main residence the couple built. It's constructed on the highest point on the island, so the views are epic. It's surrounded by perfectly manicured lawn and gorgeous landscaping. This this is not what a raw island in the Bahamas looks like. Every inch of this place, inside and out, was meticulously planned and designed. So first of all, it makes a ton of sense as to why they would put the house on the peak of the island rather than anywhere else. If you think about it, I mean, yes, there's the views, but also you're on an island, so flooding is probably a super big deal that you have to worry about. The other thing that I wanted to bring up, when he said it was undeveloped land originally, and now he's saying how every single thing on the island was meticulously designed. When you're thinking about nature, and I don't want to call it a controversy because it's not that at all, but sometimes there's this tension between nature and architecture and what qualifies as greenwashing and what doesn't. I tend to err on the side of the conversation that allows nature to just be nature and grow naturally how it wants to. I did an entire project of allowing nature to just overgrow into architecture and what that may look like. So I don't think the entire island needed this manicure of landscape, but I understand why they would do it in some parts, specifically where the house is. Now we're gliding through the main entrance into a pristine green courtyard. Straight ahead is an entry to the main house. That must be such a nice space to just sit and relax in. I'd be curious to know what the dimensions of it are. It's kind of hard to tell, but I want to point something out. So that entryway that you see that looks like a curtain, but it's actually not. Um, it's concrete. It's actually kind of funny, though, because this moment right here is almost what I was doing for my project last semester. I was taking inspiration from the curtain and having that be my facade. I can throw up an image in case anyone's curious to see what my project looks like, but it's just interesting to see the parallels between the projects I've done in school versus this island, between the landscaping and now this curtain that's not really a curtain. Inside, there's an open floor plan, beam ceilings, and it's mostly white beach house vibe. I'm a big fan of all the exposed beams. I think it makes it so much more interesting to look at rather than just a flat ceiling. They're starting to make this indoor-outdoor connection, not only with how 
much light and air is allowed into the space but also because they're actually using physical curtains on the inside that starts to match the curtains that we see in the entryways and of course everything is open concept past these columns is the master suite terrace there's a giant outdoor bathtub on one end and a day bed on the other with a lush green garden view i don't think it's necessary to have walls in a project like this where everything wants to be outside you want to make it feel like you're never indoors so why not have your bathtub outside you've got a cantilever over your head no one's gonna see you anyway you own the island this is the view from the king size bed inside the owner suite and this is the same view from a slightly different angle at dusk the suite also includes an open air shower for him and views that are jaw dropping so kind of expanding off of my last thought a little more i would imagine the only place where there is solid wall would be where the structure has to go and everywhere else, it could just be that glass. Main residence has three other guest bedrooms. This one's got a seating area and an elaborately beamed ceiling. I wish they didn't brush over the ceiling because there is a lot to look at. There's that recessed lighting that really illuminates the beams quite nicely. But I think the most interesting part is if you look at the ceiling fan, the ceiling fan's hole lines up directly with the beam that is on the ceiling. but farther back if that makes sense i don't know if i'm explaining it in a good way but they line up and i think it's pretty cool there's a sun-drenched dining area off an open concept chef's kitchen with an industrial size stainless steel wolf double oven and stovetop i wish they didn't rush over some of these rooms because there are a lot of interesting qualities to them in the kitchen i think it's really nice that they chose to do that wood panel on the ceiling instead of keeping it all white i think it helps to break up the space a little more but the other thing i want to point out now, if you look at where the refrigerators are, they actually added this architectural detail to line up exactly with where the refrigerator is. So you don't see anything over top of them. It's this super clean line. The quality of this house is exceptional. There's also this. It's a lookout tower connected to the main residence. Up these steps, you can follow the rope to a giant bell at the top of the tower. The views up here are extraordinary. It's turquoise water as far as the eye can see. That's really cool. I like that a lot, actually. Again, it's just adding to that experiential quality that this house is bringing. And I know I would spend a lot of time up there. Now we're cruising past the island's dock and loading area. These waterfront homes you see, that's where the staff live. Yeah, they're definitely going to need a dock and an area for that shipping and receiving to happen because obviously it's an island. You need your resources to get to you. Let's head over to the island's beaches now. There are two of them here, both dreamy strips of sand with hanging hammocks, perfect umbrellas, and specimen palm trees. And at the very end of this beach, you can see white tent-like structures called yurts. They come with electricity, AC, and ensuite baths. Right outside, an outdoor shower on the beach that is just wow. Honestly, I don't even know what to say about that. It's a it's a little piece of paradise. It makes you feel like you're in a completely different world. It's very cool. And get this, see those 568 palm trees sprinkled perfectly across the beach? Not a single one of them was here when the couple bought the place. Yeah, there's that nature topic again. It does almost look a little too perfect where it doesn't look real. It's very, very difficult to try to design nature and make it look natural. There are two mobile home-sized generators that can power the entire island, two satellite dishes for high-speed internet access, two more satellite dishes for TV service. There's also a smokeless incinerator for household trash and a giant reverse osmosis filtration system that can hold up to 64,000 gallons of drinking water. Very cool. I'm glad that they put that in there. It's super interesting to see how they're actually getting all of their resources. $35 million is a steep price tag for sure. But like all real estate, the value here is all about location, location, location. Very cool. That's a, a very nice house. Build quality is incredible. I don't really have anything bad to say about it. I guess the only thing I would maybe question about it is the green space factor, that everything is manicured perfectly. I think there's a time and place for it. I don't think it's necessary everywhere. But beyond that, it's insane. I would love to 
go visit or even live at a place like that like and subscribe and maybe we can make it happen and i can afford it actually i would put in an observatory so you can see the expanse of the night sky because there's going to be no light pollution out there and that would be really cool to see you be able to see all the stars planets etc but with that being said thank you so much for watching i really do appreciate it if you enjoyed the video make sure you like subscribe and turn post notifications on so you get notified every time when i upload as always let me know what you think of this house in the comments below i would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and with that being said thank you again so much for watching and until next time